the death toll for, from Monday's commuter train crash now stands at nine. That includes eight passengers and the train operator. Today, investigators plan to reenact the crash to see if they can figure out what went wrong. CBS News transportation correspondent Nancy Cordes is at the trash, uh, crash site with the latest. Nancy, good morning. Good morning to you, Harry. I just spoke with the NTSB, and it appears now that they may have to put those reenactment plans on hold because overnight when they were removing more of the wreckage from the tracks behind us, they found that the third rail, which provides power to all these trains, may be damaged. So they will have to fix that first. But in the meantime, they have a number of other leads they are pursuing. The NTSB has determined that the striking train was operating in automatic mode, kind of like autopilot on a plane. So why didn't it stop automatically when it approached a stopped train? What's more, the NTSB discovered that the emergency brake was deployed, indicating that the operator even tried to jump in and prevent the crash. The NTSB strongly urged Metro years ago to do away with the 300 outdated 70s-era train cars left in its system, including the one that crumpled on impact Monday, crushing nine inside. These older cars, they are not as strong as uh, the newer cars. But replacing the cars would have cost a billion dollars, and the strapped system was not required to follow NTSB recommendations. Congress should look closely at this accident as to whether a stronger regulatory structure is needed at the federal level. Today, some are wondering if newer, safer cars could have saved lives. One other new detail we've learned earlier this month, crews did maintenance work on the train control system on this very stretch of track behind us. Now that is the system that's designed to keep these trains a safe distance apart. So the NTSB will want to know why that maintenance was needed and whether it was done properly. Harry? Nancy Cordes in Washington, thanks. Joining us now is Debbie Hirschman of the National Transportation Safety Board. Good morning and thanks for taking the time to speak with us. Good morning, Harry. Now, so we understand now that the operator actually did apply the brake. Does that mean the computer system failed or was the computer system overridden? Well, the operator does have the ability to apply the brakes uh, even when they're in automatic mode. And we found uh, on scene that some evidence indicated that the brakes might have been applied, the emergency brakes might have been applied. That was a, a mushroom, an emergency mushroom button that was found depressed in the, at the operator's console. And then also some physical evidence on the brake rotors. They showed some bluing, which is consistent with an emergency brake application. Our investigators noted that bluing of the brake rotors on that first car. Can this computer system be overridden? Well, what we're trying to understand is how the automatic train control system works and uh, if there were any faults. And today is the first day that we're going to have access to the signal system and the tracks and the circuits uh, to be able to test those. Uh, we're to understand that uh, these, several of the cars involved were more than a couple of months overdue for inspection. How unusual is that? Well, the NTSB has not had an opportunity to review all of those records. We are aware of those press reports. Our investigators were really focusing on documenting the perishable evidence and moving the trains yesterday. And so our folks that were inspecting the train cars are going to be reviewing those maintenance records today. But until we have an opportunity to look at those, I don't have a, I, you know, I don't have a comment on that. All right. Debbie Hersman, thank you for your time this morning.